If you're in the market for a new laser, especially a diode laser, there are a lot of choices available, especially between all the different brands and all the different power levels of the lasers. As of right now, the 20 watt, 30 watt, and 40 watt lasers are becoming the standard, and a lot of people out there are really enjoying their new machines. But what if you already have a laser? What if you've already invested in a system? It's not long before you start feeling kind of left behind and you start looking at new systems. The good news is, you don't have to buy a new laser. You could simply upgrade. What I have here is the upgraded module from Orchur. Orchur is releasing their 20 watt laser module, specifically designed to go along with their Orchur Laser Master 3. You can also retrofit it onto some of their older machines as well. So you don't have to buy a whole new system, simply buy the new module, swap it out, and you have the more powerful version of the laser. Even better, you still have your 10 watts, so you can switch back and forth depending on your need and your application. Let's take a look at the upgraded module. The modules are really easy to swap out. Simply unplug the pre-existing cables, remove the 10 watt or previous module, and slide on the new one. Use the new thumb screw, connect the new power. It's all contained in a single cable, just like the previous one, which makes it really nice. Make sure you connect it to the right port here, labeled L. We'll do some cable management later, and we're almost ready to go. So swapping it out is really just about that easy. When you buy the upgraded 20 watt module, make sure that you use the new power supply that's included. It is a different power output and requires a different power block. So make sure you use the one that goes along with the 20 watt. By comparison, this was the 10 watt power brick, and this is the 20 watt. There is a difference in size, Make sure that you use the appropriate one, otherwise you might have issues. And I would even recommend doing what I do. I label all of mine so I know which one goes with which. So, let's go ahead and install that bad boy. Just like the 10 watt version of the laser, there is a built-in port on the top side for air. And especially because this is the 20 watt module, it puts out a lot more power, it's gonna be putting out a lot more smoke, especially if you're using it for cutting. Please make sure that you have your air line attached at all times so you always have air feeding down to your piece and avoid any possible flare-ups fires and help to blow out some of the smoke so let me go ahead and install that now so that should be good to go so just that quickly we have our new laser head on we're going to fire up light burn i believe there is one change we need to make in a light burn to make sure that it recognizes the different laser head at least in terms of the power output and i think we're about good to go and for the most part, we have it installed. It's a pretty quick swap. So let's take a look at the module itself. We have the power and data that is all in one cord that is not removable from the laser head like the previous one, but still have a single cable going into our little nested cables back here. I'll manage all this later. We have a different thumb screw that's easier to manage. Down here at the bottom, we have our focusing foot. So we press that down. Put that up against the piece that we're going to be engraving or cutting. Set it up, kick it back up, and we are good to go. In comparison to the previous module, more of the actual laser is enclosed, but we do have a small window there in the front because it's going to be kicking out a lot more power, a lot more of those, uh, those little watts. We want to make sure that we're a little bit better protected. And we have one small viewing window right there, which should be good enough for what we're going to be doing. It will make it a little bit more interesting in terms of setting up and focusing, but that's what the frame uh, button is for in Lightburn. And just by comparison, let's see the 10 watt and the 20 watt side by side. So you can see the obvious difference between those two modules and their uh, parent power output. So 10 watts, 20 watts. Let's go ahead and fire this up, take care of some extra settings, and then we'll do a comparison of the 10 watt laser test compared to the 20 watt that we'll do over here on this other side. So there's one more thing I need to adjust before we even turn the machine on. It'd be pretty bad if I didn't. Because the laser module is physically a different size than the previous one, than the 10 watt, we need to change our physical stops. The Ortura Laser Master 3 uses these screws as its physical stop, and we need to move them back so the laser module does not crunch into the front rail here. So we're gonna take this out, and we're gonna move it to the next position right there. 
So that one's set. Now I just have to do the other side. And we are in business. So one final check before I turn this on. I have my new laser module installed. I have the air hose plugged in. I have my power attached and connected. I will tidy up the cables at a later time. I have my new thumb screw on there. Um, I will focus this when I'm ready to start engraving and doing that test. And I have my limit stops set up. They're not really limit switches. This is a stop, a physical stop. So I don't want to call it by the wrong thing. And I think we're ready to turn this on. So let's go ahead and fire it up for the first time. The startup looked good. It homed correctly. It didn't crunch into the front of the uh, rail. Now let's make sure we go to light burn and make some of the adjustments because we are working with a slightly different work area now. So let's go ahead and do that. In one of my previous videos, I talked about what I'm really looking out of my diode machines and it's why I keep reviewing new ones and looking for the most power I could get out of it. And a lot of it comes down to trying to get as close to the capabilities of a CO2 machine, which tend to be a lot more expensive, a lot heavier and stationary. And I'm trying to get it to the point where I can pretty much do anything with a diode laser that I could do with a CO2 laser. And with this upgrade with the 20 watt module forger, it gets really, really close. And a lot of it starts with a simple test. So doing an engrave and cut test. Right here, I have a comparison between the 10 watt module and the 20 watt module for Archer. I'll show close ups of this so you can see the real difference. And the results are really promising. The power output from the 20 is what you would expect. I mean, it is twice the power, so it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. But based on this, I can comfortably cut with 75% power at 400 millimeters a minute, which is still a lot slower than a CO2. But with this speed and this quality of cut, I'm comfortable with using the dye laser to actually finally start cutting and doing projects, which wasn't the case before. In fact, so much power where some of the engraving tests blew all the way through the entire board. Um, thank goodness for the air assist, otherwise it probably would have caught fire. My next test was with MDF. Um, usually with my tests, I try to use the most common products and materials that people end up using their lasers. And it tends to be three millimeter plywood, MDF, and some other things that I'll show in a moment. But the other one I like doing is this. My garage door is open and somebody walked by. It just seemed kind of weird. Anyways, the next test I, I like using is MDF. And I like doing the little Star Wars Aztec thing that I found. Um, I'll show it up close. And what's really nice about this is because of the power of the machine, it doesn't simply just burn the parts that's supposed to burn, but it actually engraves in. So you have a little bit of a, a dimensional look with the object. And it came out really good and really clean. There are some really fine details in this that do not get seen with lasers that are too powerful or have a larger laser dot because they simply just get burned through. But this maintained pretty much all of the details. The other test that I do is a really high quality black and white photograph of Harrison Ford that I use because there's a lot of fine details in the picture as a black and white. It's a really good chance to see the dot, uh, the dot pattern capability of the dial laser. And I'm gonna have to make sure I shoot this one under the appropriate light because I don't think I've seen this photograph engraved with this quality and this detail. There's detail in this engraving that I didn't even know was actually in the photograph when you look at it on a screen. And a lot of it has to do with the texture of the skin and the whiskers on his face. And once again, because of the power of the laser, it's engraving further into the surface and giving it a more dimensional look. So next I did my cut test with three millimeter plywood, which is probably the most common material that's used with uh, lasers, not only uh, diode lasers, but also CO2 lasers. And this is probably the cleanest cut test I've had with a diode laser thus far. There's almost no burning on the backside. The built-in air assist definitely helps with that. Kind of 400 millimeters a minute, at about 75 to 100% power. I don't remember the exact power, but I think it was somewhere in there. Now, 400 millimeters a minute is still a little bit slow, especially compared to a higher end CO2 machine, but I actually think it's acceptable, especially for the current setup and the result. So if you're looking for more speed, you might need to wait for a higher power laser or look at a CO2, but you can definitely do it here. For my laser tests, I usually do a series of six or seven tests using pretty standardized material that I can kind of compare from laser to laser when I need to. 
And the next test is on metal. This is coated stainless steel and it marked it really well. There are ways to get different colors on the metal. I need to spend a little bit more time playing with those settings to see how that works. And I also need more metal samples because I don't have any others around the shop, unfortunately, to actually put that to work. But I do have clients that do want things uh, marked on metal. So I actually do need to explore that and kind of figure that out um, a little bit more. Now remember, this is marking on metal, not engraving. There are two different processes. So this is basically discoloring the metal in a way that looks like it's been marked. But engraving is actually going to be going into the metal itself where you can actually feel a textural difference or even dimensional difference on the material. This doesn't quite do that. It does change the texture a little bit, but it's not really penetrating very far into uh, the material itself. For that, you would actually need a fiber laser or a IR uh, infrared laser, which um, I think a couple different companies on the market do make those. I have not had the chance to test one out yet, but metal. This is my favorite of the tests that I've done. I don't usually engrave on this material, but I found a piece lying around and really wanted to try it. And this is engraving on black acrylic. And this engraving of Wolverine came out amazing. I'll try to get some better shots of this because it, you do have to kind of have the lighting right for it to kind of catch. But when you run your finger over it, which you can probably hear it here, the textural difference and that feel is really cool along with it just looking amazing, almost three dimensional um, in some ways. And aside from just engraving the black acrylic, I also made sure I cut it out of the larger piece to show that it can also cut three millimeter black acrylic. With all the tests completed, I'm really happy with this machine. You probably hear that from a lot of people doing reviews of lasers, especially if they had been given the machine. And I understand that, but I'm hoping that I have a decent track record here on YouTube of at least providing a, a pretty honest feedback of these machines. Is this machine perfect? No, not by any means. I wish it was faster. I wish the 20 watt had more power, which means that I'm really looking at a 30 or 40 watt simply because I want to be able to cut faster, but it still does everything that I need it to do. And it is going to live right here for quite a while. So those are the tests. I hope you're as impressed with the results as I am, was, are. All right, so I talked about the practicality of the test that I run. If you want me to run a test, or you're curious about a certain capability of this machine or any other machine that I've been testing and want me to try something, let me know and I'll, I'll try it. I ultimately want to make sure that these videos that I produce and that hopefully all of you are watching are answering questions that you have about these machines. So if you have a question about this machine or anything else that I've been doing on the channel, please make sure to ask. I'd be happy to answer all of them. It's about that time to start wrapping things up. But before we go, I want to remind everybody that if you want one of these machines for yourself, specifically your return machines, we have links in the description below. There are always running discounts and promotions based on the different seasons and holidays. So go ahead and check that out. I think they have some promotions running right now. Remember that you can get just the upgrade module of the 20 watt and that'll fit any of Orchur's older machines. Um, just quick notice, it might also take and require an additional board that'll be included in the upgrade package um, that you'll have to install. You don't have to open up the machine. It kind of installs on top. Orchur has really good directions on how to do all that. But then if you want to buy the entire thing altogether, you could do that as well. Once again, those links are in the description below and clicking on those does help out the channel. Another way to help out the channel is we have a Patreon. If you join that, we have different tiers of rewards. We have uh, different things that we're going to be in the process of adding. We have discounts for the store, for our t-shirt shop to get shirts like this because lasers are cool. And that definitely helps out the channel. And the last way, of course, is simply just your eyeballs watching our content. We have a lot of content in our back catalog, lots of laser stuff, lots of geek related stuff. I think you'll find something that you like there. So that's it. Have fun in the shop. Don't forget to design, make and play. See you next time.